Okay, we are on to another lesson. We are gonna talk about managing materials, okay? So how are materials transported in the body? How do the body systems interact in order for this to happen? That's what we're gonna focus on today. So let's get started. So first we're gonna talk about the circulatory system. And some people use it interchangeably with the cardiovascular system, but in reality, the circulatory system has two parts, the cardiovascular system, so your heart and the blood vessels connected directly to it, so arteries and veins and capillaries, and then the lymphatic system, which has its own separate system of vessels, but does interconnect with the cardiovascular system um, in order for those fluids to cycle back, okay? So it's actually two parts, the circulatory system. What is the job, the function? It brings nutrients and oxygen to two cells, removes waste like carbon dioxide, but that's just one example. It helps to fight disease and infection, bringing immune cells where they need to go. The main structure, the main organ is the heart. Okay, so we have the cardiovascular system with the heart and the arteries and the veins. And then we have the lymphatic system with lymph nodes and lymph vessels. And together, they make the circulatory system. So the heart, let's talk about the heart. The heart contracts to pump blood and then relaxes. Contracts and then relaxes. And when you listen to your heartbeat, you're hearing these valves close. Uh, which are directing the blood flow. We have upper chambers in the heart and they're labeled with an A in these diagrams and they're called the atria or they're two atriums. Okay, so atrium, atrium, atria. And then there are the bottom chambers and they're called ventricles and they're labeled with a V. And the ventricles are pumpers, lots of muscle. So the ventricles, when they squeeze, they push the blood far. Okay? And because it has to send the, body, the blood throughout the whole body, so those ventricles need to have a lot of pumping force. So let's talk about blood vessels. First type, arteries. Trick, arteries go away from the heart. They carry typically oxygen-rich blood with one exception. So in general, though, oxygen-rich blood. Lots of muscle in arteries. They squeeze and pump to help move the blood through the body. So, and that's why you can feel a pulse. So if you feel, put your fingers on your wrist right here, you'll be able to feel your pulse. You can put your fingers on your neck and feel your pulse. Those are just two of the spots where you can feel your pulse. Okay, again, I'm going to put the link to this video in the description so that you can watch it. Okay. But we're going to move on to blood vessels or veins. They're the opposite. They're going to go to the heart, not away to the heart. And they carry oxygen-poor blood, again, with one exception, but we're not going to focus on that. So oxygen-poor blood in veins. But remember, blood is not blue and veins are really not blue. It just has to do with the way the light is reflected and absorbed through your skin. There's a lot less muscle in veins. Okay. And then we have capillaries. Capillaries, they're teeny tiny. They're the smallest vessels. One cell layer thick. Why would they be so small? They allow diffusion. So all the nutrients and waste and gases have to be exchanged at the level of the capillaries. They connect arteries and veins. So arteries get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until they're one cell thick and then they're capillaries. And then the capillaries start getting bigger, 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 and then they're veins, okay? So the capillaries are the connectors between the artery and the vein. So how does the blood actually flow? So the blood goes from the body to the heart through veins and it's oxygen poor. I put it in blue to remind you that it has less oxygen, but remember, it's not actually blue. It's just the standard way we show it. And then it's going to have to go from the heart to the lungs. And why? In order to pick up oxygen. And then it's going to go from the lungs back to the heart, and now it's full of oxygen. And now it's going to go from the heart to the whole body. It has, the heart has to pump the blood, go through the whole body to deliver the oxygen. So it's going to go from the body to the heart, from the heart to 
to the lungs, from the lungs to the heart, and then from the heart to the whole body. So from the whole body to the heart, from the heart to the lungs, from the lungs back to the heart, and from the heart to the whole body, back to the heart, to the lungs, to the heart, to the whole body. Do you see, it goes over and over and over again. What happens during exercise? Well, our breathing rate increases to bring more oxygen in. Our heart pumps faster, our pulse rate increases. If you feel your pulse when you're exercising, you'll find it gets a lot faster. So why? The nutrients and wastes have to exchange faster. I gotta bring more oxygen, get rid of more carbon dioxide. Bring more nutrients, get rid of more waste, okay? And what about blood pressure, okay? Blood pressure is the pumping strength of the heart or the ventricles. What it has to do with is the heart squeezes and pushes blood, and that force of the blood pushes against the walls of arteries, and that's what we measure as blood pressure. We want it strong enough to push blood through our, our whole body, but we don't want it too strong that it stresses out those walls in the artery. Okay, here's another video. Again, I'll put the link in the description so you can watch it. It's definitely worth it. Okay, now the lymphatic system. Remember, we kind of touched on it, but now we're gonna come back to it. The lymphatic system is part of the circulatory system. Remember, circulatory was cardiovascular and lymphatic. It moves fluid from tissues back into the bloodstream. <clears throat> the parts would be lymph, which is the fluid, lymph vessels, and that's where the lymph flows through, and then lymph nodes. You have some in your neck, in your armpit. Um, you can see from the image, you have them all over, but a common place a doctor will check is here. They filter the lymph and they're gonna trap bacteria or anything else that should not get back into your um, bloodstream. So again, lymph nodes, they have lymph flowing in, but they're like big filters, okay? And then um, they're gonna decide what gets through and what gets trapped, okay? And they can initiate an immune response. So if they've trapped some bacteria, they're gonna get swollen um, as they are initiating an immune response. Initiate means to start. Okay, let's talk about the respiratory system. We bring oxygen containing air in. We remove carbon dioxide and water. Now, respiration is different. Respiration is cellular respiration where we convert glucose into energy. Breathing means the exchange of gases between inside and outside the body. So what are the parts of the respiratory system? We have the lungs, they're the main organs. We have the nose, we should be breathing in through our nose. Why? It serves to moisten the air that we breathe. We have the trachea, the windpipe, that branches into two bronchi. One goes to each lung, and then those get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, until we get to alveoli, which are tiny little air sacs in the lungs, and that's where gas exchange happens. So gas exchange happens in the alveoli. So if we have um, blood coming through that has lots of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is gonna move into the alveoli. The oxygen is gonna move out so the blood gets filled with oxygen as it moves past. So the blood as it flows past the alveoli gets rid of its carbon dioxide and it picks up oxygen over and over and over again. It's diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Very important to remember. So what does the breathing process look like? Well, we have inhalation, breathing in. When we breathe in, the diaphragm and the muscles between our ribs contract. And then it creates this sort of like vacuum and it pulls air in. Exhalation is when we breathe out, we exhale and the diaphragm and the muscles between the ribs relax. Okay, here again is another video. I'm gonna put the link in the description. I encourage you to watch it. Now we're gonna talk about the excretory system. The 
process of excretion means removing wastes. So the parts, we have the kidneys, the bladder, the urethra, they're all together in one system. We have lungs, skin, and your liver. We're gonna talk about each of those. So the excretory system, what do the kidneys, the bladder, and the urethra do? Well, the kidneys are bean-shaped. We have two of them. They filter blood, they regulate the amount of water, and they remove water and urea. Urea comes from the breakdown of protein. They contain filtering units called nephrons that produce urine. The bladder stores urine, and then urethra is the tube where urine leaves the body. Okay, so again, look in the description for a link to this video. Okay, but you can see here in the picture, we have kidney. This is a ureter, that's the connector to the bladder, and then the tube that leads from the bladder out of your body is the urethra. Two bean-shaped kidneys, a bladder, and a urethra. Okay, another video, look to the description to find a link. Now, what about your lungs? Well, your lungs exhale carbon dioxide, but they also exhale water. Remember, you can see your breath on a cold day. That tells you that water is also being excreted. You're also breathing out water. And your skin is also part of the excretory system. Sweat helps to cool your body, and that's the water part of sweat. But sweat also contains a small amount of urea and also some salts. Okay, so we can get rid of some of those things that way. And then we have the liver. Liver is super important. This is one of the vital organs. Literally can't survive without your liver. The liver helps to break down red blood cells. It produces urea from proteins. Remember how we talked about it in sweat and we talked about it in the kidney? Okay, super important. It gets rid of all toxins, even medicines. Okay, so anything that um, is ingested, your liver is like the detoxifier. So when people drink too much alcohol, for example, it stresses their liver and it can get damaged. Okay, um, even though if you're taking things like Tylenol and ibuprofen and things like that, it can still it still has to get filtered through the liver, and it can stress the liver out if you are taking it too often. Now. What happens if there's a disruption, like a blockage or disease in the excretory system? This is really important. Wastes would build up. Homeostasis would be disrupted. Disrupted, okay? And the internal environment could become toxic, which means serious illness or death, okay? You absolutely have to be able to get rid of wastes in order to survive. And there you have it. That's how we manage materials in our body.